Hello, my name is Mark Wyatt with Avaya Global Support Services. This video is about Avaya Session Border Controller for Enterprise and how to take a network trace and use Wireshark for analyzing the results. So, why would you want to run a network trace on the SBC? Well, the answer is for many reasons, such as checking the SIP signaling between a service provider and the SBC external interface or between the SBC and the VIA equipment, such as Session Manager. You may also need to check why the audio on a call is not working correctly, if, for example, you have one-way audio. It can even be used for troubleshooting issues, such as NTP not working on the SBC. Once you have the network trace, you can then use Wireshark to perform analysis on the SIP call flow and also on audio streams as required. There are some important considerations before tracing on the SBC. If you are using encrypted TLS for SIP calls, you will not be able to see the SIP call flow in Wireshark. In such a scenario, you can use Trace SBC on the SBC command line to analyze the SIP call flow instead. Also, when tracing SIP calls and RTP streams on a busy system, the generated Wireshark file can get big very quickly. It may be necessary to use some filters on the trace or perform tracing when the system is quieter. The first and easiest way to perform a network trace on the SBC is to use the Web Console Packet Capture feature. Once logged into the Web Console, click on Device Specific Settings, then click on Troubleshooting, and finally click on Trace as shown to open the Packet Capture screen. Once you have opened the Packet Capture screen, Make sure to select the relevant device that you want to perform the network trace on from the list of devices. Notice there is a limit of 10,000 packets via the web packet capture feature, so it's often not suitable for tracing very busy systems, especially if tracing audio issues. Now you are ready to configure relevant parameters according to what you want to trace. In this example, I will show you how to trace a SIP call on TCP port 5060 across all interfaces. So the only thing that we need to change from default is the protocol to TCP and in the local address we will add the port of 5060. This will now trace any packets on TCP port 5060. We will leave the default maximum number of packets to capture as 10,000. Now I'm going to start the trace and make a call from the trunk provider through the SBC to my 1x communicator. Notice I give the file name a PCAP extension so it can be opened in Wireshark. So I click Start Capture and I'll bring my 1x communicator to the forefront. Now I'm going to place a call through my trunk provider. The call comes in on my 1x. Whilst my trace is still captured in the background, I will answer the call. And now that you should hear my voice uh, on this call. I will then hang up the call. And as soon as I've done that, I'm going to stop the capture. Now, hopefully, that trace will contain all of the SIP traffic on port 5060 over TCP. Now we have our SIP traffic trace saved on the SPC. We can view it by clicking on the Captures tab and clicking the trace we just took. We can open this file directly into Wireshark for analysis as it's in the standard PCAP format. You can now see the trace within Wireshark showing all the packets captured on TCP port 5060. Now, unless you are experienced in using Wireshark to manually go through a trace, this can be quite daunting and difficult. There is, however, an easy way to read the trace in Wireshark using the VoIP call analysis feature. This can be done by clicking on telephony in the menu and clicking VoIP calls as shown. Once you click on VoIP calls, Wireshark goes through the trace and lists the VoIP calls it finds as shown on the screen. In this case, although I made only one call from my trunk provider to my 1x communicator, it shows as two separate calls. This is because the SPC has two separate call legs, one on the external interface, which is typically the B1, and the other call leg on the internal interface, which is typically the A1. We can now display the call or calls as a ladder diagram by selecting the relevant calls using the control key and clicking each call. Once the relevant calls are highlighted, you can click flow 
to open the ladder diagram and then expand it to view the full core flow. Now you have the ladder diagram loaded, you can check through the core flow for any problems in the SIP signaling, such as a drop packet, an error response or a timeout, etc. In the displayed core flow, you will see the call originating from the trunk provider IP on the far left ending in 119, which then hits the B1 interface, IP ending in dot .32. As you will see, it's highlighted in green meaning all the messages in green have the same call ID. Then you will notice the other call leg from the A1 interface, IP ending in dot .28, to the session manager, IP ending in dot .132, which is highlighted in orange. This is a different call ID to that shown in green, even though it's part of the same call. To drill down further on a particular SIP packet, simply click on it in the ladder diagram. Wireshark then automatically displays that packet in the main trace window in the background, which you can then switch to to view in more detail. You can then expand the relevant sections and view the complete SIP packet and headers and even drill down to the SDP as shown. Now you have seen how to perform a network trace from the web console. It's important to know how to do it from the CLI also, as it gives you more flexibility in what you can trace and for how long, etc. First, you need to log into the SPC using the IPCS account, remembering to use port 222. Once you have logged in as IPCS, you can switch to the root user using the sudo su command. Once you've switched to root, you can then type in your command to start tracing on the SBC. In this example, I will show you how to trace all packets across any interface and write to a file which can be downloaded for analysis in Wireshark. This kind of trace will get large quickly because it captures not only SIP signaling but also the RTP audio packets across all interfaces. This way, we can analyse the complete call flow including signaling and audio. From the SBC CLI, you can enter the TCP dump command with relevant parameters as shown. First type TCP dump, then specify which interface using the dash I option. For example, this could be A1 or B1 if you only wanted to capture one side of the SBC, but in this case we will specify any to capture on all interfaces. Then we specify the file location using the dash w parameter to dump the packets into a file. The best option here is to specify the location as slash archive, pcap files, ipcs2 and give it a file name of mydump.pcap. Then you can easily download the trace file via the EMS web console once finished. Now we have our command ready, I can hit enter to start the trace. Now the trace has started, I will make a test call and the trace should capture not only the SIP signaling but also the RTP streams across all interfaces. Once my test call is complete, I can use Ctrl C to stop the trace. As you can see, this trace has captured 1651 packets. Now the trace is complete, you can log into the EMS web console and download the trace file for analysis. Just go to device specific settings, troubleshooting, trace, select the relevant device and then click on captures. You should then see the trace file. In this case it's mydump.pcap and we can click this file to download and open directly into Wireshark for analysis. Now we have the trace open in Wireshark. We can again use the VoIP analysis tool to analyse not only the SIP signalling but also the RTP streams. Click telephony, then VoIP calls from the menu. This then brings up the VoIP calls found in the trace. Again you can highlight the relevant calls using the control key and clicking on each call. Once you have highlighted the relevant calls, you can analyse the SIP call flow 
as previously shown using the flow button. This then opens the ladder diagram and you can go through the SIP signaling. But also note in this ladder diagram, it now also indicates the RTP streams. It shows the direction of flow of RTP from the relevant IP addresses to and from both interfaces of the SBC. In the highlighted example, it shows one RTP stream started flowing from my 1x communicator with the IP ending in .95 towards the A1 interface ending in .28. Subsequently, you can see the SBCE B1 interface also sending the RTP to the service provider trunk IP, in this case ending in .155. One great feature of Wireshark is it also gives you the ability to listen to the actual RTP streams. This way you can check for audio quality and find out where packets might be getting dropped or lost for example. In order to see the RTP profiles and to be able to listen to them, you can go back to the VoIP calls list. Highlight the calls as previous, but this time click on player, which will open up the RTP player. Once the RTP player is opened, you can then click on decode. And Wireshark will then show you the streams associated with the calls you highlighted as shown. Now you can see a graphical representation of the RTP streams which in itself is useful to see if RTP is actually flowing. Notice in this call you will see six different RTP streams for one single call. But why six? Well, firstly remember the SPC itself has two call legs as previously mentioned. One on the B1 interface to the trunk provider and the other on the A1 interface to the internal network. Each call leg will have two or more RTP streams associated with it. In this case, a stream of RTP from the trunk provider to the B1 interface and a separate stream from the B1 interface back to the trunk provider. The same goes for the A1 interface with an addition. Firstly, there is an RTP stream from the A1 interface to the media processor that is used by the CM that the 1X communicator is connected to for its features. In return, there is an RTP stream from the media processor back to the A1 interface. This stream is used during initial call setup and you will see the ringing sound in the RTP stream from the MedPro to the A1 interface and also then from the B1 interface to the trunk provider. Once the call is answered, notice the change of RTP because the RTP is shuffled from the MedPro to the endpoint. In this case, it's 1x communicator. So you will see RTP streams from A1 to 1X communicator and also from 1X communicator to the A1 interface. Notice you can play back RTP streams by selecting them and clicking the play button. You can then listen for any audio issues and determine which RTP stream is the likely source of any problems. In the example shown, I have selected the RTP streams from the B1 interface to the trunk and from the trunk to the B1 and hit in play, you can then listen to the RTP streams. Hello? Hey Tony, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Hi, this is just a test call, so I appreciate you taking the call. Notice you can also check the RTP stream statistics, including number of packets dropped by the jitter buffer, out of sequence packets or packets with wrong timestamps, all of which can help you identify the source of audio problems to and from the SBC interfaces. It's also worth noting that within Wireshark, when you are viewing the main trace window, you can also click on telephony, then RTP, and then show all streams. This gives an overall snapshot of RTP streams in the trace and you can quickly identify problematic streams for lost packets, etc. You can also click on a particular stream and find its reverse stream by clicking Find Reverse. As you can see, it now highlights the two streams. Further analysis of the streams can be done by clicking on Analyze, which opens up another window with a complete breakdown of packets and their statuses, etc. To recap an important point, on busy systems, capturing on all interfaces and ports including RTP can create very large files for analysis, 
so it's advised to use filters on your network trace. For example, if you only need to capture the SIP signaling for an issue, such as why a call disconnects after 32 seconds, filter on the specific port, typically 5060, as shown in the command on screen. This will avoid the generation of large files, which are often difficult to analyze in Wireshark. You can also find out more about the command line options of TCP dump by using the man TCP dump command as shown. This will help you tailor the trace to your specific requirements. That concludes this video on network tracing and analysis on a via session border controller for enterprise. Thank you for watching. We would welcome any comments, suggestions and feedback by emailing mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.